Hey guys, in this video, we are going to watch together a new video from Glencore that present their new code of conduct. Yeah. <laughs> I can't make this shit up, I mean, their new code of conduct. So, um, I haven't watched the entire videos because I wanted to do it with you live, guys. And uh, yeah, we'll see. I mean, it's cool that Glencore published their new code of conduct on the YouTube. Glencore. <laughs> I mean, uh, for those that don't know, Glencore was created after a coup. A bunch of traders uh, got together and uh, literally took over the company from uh, Mark Rich, the previous owner. Uh, it's funny when a company is with a loaded history such as Glencore or any other uh, community trader. Uh, I mean, they, I don't want to single out Glencore in that case. Uh, but it's funny when they want to communicate around uh, their code of conduct. So uh, we'll see. I mean, what do you think? If you think that this new code of conduct is the beginning of a new era for Glencore, just dislike the video. And if you think that this new code of conduct is just a, a public relations stunt, uh, like the video. So, and, and we'll see, we'll see what you think. Okay, so, so let's watch it. The code reflects our purpose and values. It is the backbone of this company. It is the DNA of this company. It's something that has made us successful for nearly 50 years. It's given us... Okay, Gary, so I know that you are new at your CEO job, but let me give you an unsolicit, unsolicited piece of advice. Don't say shit that are factually untrue. <laughs> I mean, you, come on, man. You cannot say that the code has been the backbone of your company for 50 years. I haven't watched the code yet, but I'm pretty sure that we will find a lot of stuff that Glencore did in the past that is not compliant with your code. So just, just don't say it, but say something like, for the next 50 years, the code will be your, your new backbone or, 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 or North Star or like shit like this. But don't say it has been 50 years because everyone knows it's not true. Our customers comfort to know that the products we supply them are sourced responsibly, that the uh, underlying business that has provided that commodity is one that is operated uh, in accordance with all laws, it's operated with integrity. In accordance with all laws, yeah, this is all, all of them, like all of them. And it's incumbent on us to ensure that that continues. This opportunity to refresh the code, to re-establish the code, is just moving with the world and it ensures we remain commercially competitive and at the same time a responsible operator. The tone does obviously start from the top and the top is not just me, it's a management team across the business, across the world and it's important that our employees uh, live by the code, understand the code and operate by the code because that is what will continue the success that we've had over the last 50 years. Hey, not bad, not bad. For a pure stunt, I mean... Uh, and it's funny that this is the first time that um, I hear the new uh, Glencore CEO speaking. And uh, uh, I didn't know that he was also from South Africa. So, so he's basically a copy past from the former CEO, uh, uh, Ivan Glasenberg. So I don't know about you guys, but I don't think that Glencore has changed really, because otherwise they would have chosen a CEO that is not the, <laughs> the copy <laughs> of the former CEO, but, but I don't know. Let's watch the other video. Oh, have you seen it? 38 views. I mean, my channel is doing like way better than theirs. <laughs> Call me if you need that. To me, the code of conduct is really the backbone of our business. What our business practice is, the way we behave, the way we operate, our conduct towards customers, to stakeholders, to business partners. It's a single place that drives us in how we run this business. The way I look at the code of conduct, it's a distillation of best practices we've had over the period of time. It is clarifying it and making it simple so people can operationalize it. We have a diverse business and we have to make complex decisions on a day-to-day -day basis. And it helps people contact. Okay, what he has just said is completely right. I mean, they have a diverse business. It's quite complicated to, to run it. It's really a supply chain business. 
There is a lot of different actors, a lot of different means of transport. If there is an issue at the mine, then I don't know, there's an issue with your vessel. And I mean, everything can go like to hell quite easily. So that, that part is true. The code of conduct is not only sort of expectation in terms of being acting ethically and being a responsibly run. <laughs> Have you seen this guy? The CFO is the perfect archetype of a CFO. Like small lips, little uh, glasses. <laughs> company, I think it's a must. I think anyone not having those at its core are going to disappear as organisations in the short, medium and long term. When we do business in difficult jurisdictions, wherever we're doing things, not losing our core culture of this entrepreneurial spirit, this innovation, we can take our values and we can instill them in the places and the counterparties we operate within and then people can see the way we operate and the code of conduct crystallises that. Those uh, core sense of values inside our business is there to guide us, to make sure that we have integrity in the way we do our business and to understand how we go about things. But it doesn't dull the edge. I think at the end of the day, uh, we'll still always adapt. <laughs> so, uh, with Lagian, what was his name? Uh, anyway, this is the only guy that says something like, actually, this is actually like true. It doesn't dull the edge. And at the end of the day, we are go always going to adapt to the circumstances. So, to uh, circumstances, but we shouldn't improvise around our core values. We've thrived on being a competitive organization, and this is us pushing our values, making them clear to not only... Come on, have you seen it? Like, all those guys, the management, they are all head of marketing. I get they I just like rebranded all the head of trading as marketing, which is like quite funny, actually. You know what, guys, you should, what you should do is like all your mining engineers, you should call them like sustainability engineers and all your uh, traffic officer operators you should call them like a decarbonizer because we use the fastest uh, road to get your shipments so we saved up a lot of uh, carbon or something like this <laughs> only ourselves but to our customers and saying look come along on the journey with us this is what we stand for i think spelling that out quite clearly is a great uh, a great tool for business we have a drive to ensure that we do things responsibly through our culture of always being the best and achieving the best and upholding the highest standards. And we apply that same principle when it comes to ethics, integrity, and the environment. So this is the guy in charge of core that is, that speak about environment. We want long-term relationships with our customers. We want to develop new operations to help our customers. We want to deliver quality product to them. And the code helps us in delivering that. And it gives them comfort to be able to do business with us for another 50 years. You've got a Glencore which, you know, compliance, govern. Robin, seriously, as a marketer, you should know that your, your jacket is too tight. And it's ESG, the footprint that we have, all these topics are at the forefront and just as important as, you know, how much each trade is going to make us. Mm, ESG is as important as your p &L. Mm, come on, you, you, are get, you are going a little bit too far, Robin. Success is about value, but value is not all... Jason, I mean, your jacket is too large. I mean, what the hell, guys? All about profit today or tomorrow. It's all about long-term sustainability of the company. When people say commercial results, they sometimes... I'm pausing it here because I, I guess it's going to be the same like corporate bullshit uh, to the end of the video. I just want to applaud uh, Glencore for their diversity into their management. Because as we have seen, it's like... <laughs> a, lot, a lot of women uh, as head of marketing. <laughs> Usually there's like no woman uh, at those positions because maybe women they are not as stupid as men. Because look at all those guys, they are really, really clever. They have been dedicating like 10 years of their life to Glencore. I mean, and I guess they, they have like no weekend, they have like no family, they have like, yeah, they, they gave everything up to be at this position. And, and especially the last CEO, Ivan Glasenberg, he was like really well known to be like a complete asshole. Like if you arrive at the office at 8.30, he will say something like, oh, good afternoon, or, he will call you like during your weekend to speak about business and basically if you have a family or something like this it was not possible to climb the ladder at Glencore so so maybe Famel 
uh, they are a little bit less stupid than normal and uh, they don't think that this game worth it even though I think they all like make a lot of money between I guess half a million to a million and more base plus a bonus for what at the end of the day to be the best at trading like coal I, I don't know though that I have a family I have a different uh, view on that but Maybe 10 years ago, I would have said like, yeah, sign me for this shit. So. The Shipping and Commodity Academy, the best online academy to break into the commodity trading industry. And don't tell Glencore, but we have two students that currently work for them. So I've just downloaded their code of conduct and it's 59 pages long. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I thought it would be like two, three pages or something like this. 59! Fair competition? Inside information? What the hell? Inside information? I mean, inside information is not possible in commodity trading because we are not um, talking about a, a public company. So no one has like inside information, such as the CEO or the CFO. Um, uh, this, yeah, that's weird. Fair competition? What does it mean? But what does it mean? Yeah, fair competition. What does it mean? We don't exchange commercial insensitive information with our competitor. Expect where well, we have a legitimate need to do so. Real life application. So let's see. I'm preparing Glencore's submission for a tender. I'm pretty sure one of our competitors is also offering to fill in the same tender. Coincidentally, this evening at the gym, I ran into Michael, who works at this competitor. It was late and practically empty there. I asked Mike how he's doing and he replied, things are busy. I responded, you must be working on the Acme tender. We're also interested in preparing for it. What are you thinking on the price for your offer? No one can have possibly overheard the discussion between Michael and me. So no harm, right? Okay, I have a completely different take on the real life application. Uh, I think as a trader, you should try to pursue to get as more intel as possible uh, about your competition, what they are doing. <laughs> and sometimes maybe you need to speak with your competitors. Maybe you want to give, even like give him uh, your, your price, uh, the, your bid price. Every three months there is a new tender and for that one you don't know that you're like not in a volume or like a bad position or a bad price. So you want to be open with your competitor. So the next time he's going to be open with you. I mean, there's like a thousand ways to see it. So. But, but you know what, if you want me to review the code of conduct, just leave a comment below and then maybe I'll do it because I think I've got a lot of <laughs> things to say about it. So we had a, a good laugh at the expense of those uh, marketers. But now if we think like two minutes, why would they put their management head of trading in front of a camera, which is something like completely unnatural for traders to do? Um, this is why I made fun of them, of the jacket and, and so on, because they, <laughs> I mean, they are not, they are not used to uh, uh, being in front of a camera. So why would they do that? I mean, Glencore, there are no dummies. So um, there is a reason for that. And my gut says that this story is for bankers. Because at the end of the day, bankers are the only dudes like cynical enough to say like, oh, Glencore is doing great stuff on the, the sustainability side. So I will put like a Glencore shares into my ESG fund. <laughs> oh yeah, sure, Glencore issue like green bond with a preferential rate because what you do for the environment is like uh, top notch. <laughs> yeah, so I, I think this is actually the whole purpose of this new messaging or new communication line that has Glencore. I think their goal is to secure cheap funding in, in the future because they know where the things are going and they know that as a miner, it's going to be tougher and tougher to get um, money for their assets and so on. I've got nothing against it. I just think that they, are, they shouldn't try to communicate about a new code of conduct because in the past they did that stuff that was like really, really borderline. So, I mean, yeah, guys, don't communicate around it. I think you can do a lot of communication around the fact that So guys, I hope that you liked the video. If you want me to uh, review the, their code of conduct, just comment the, behind the, the video. And uh, yeah, that's it for me today. Ciao.